Hi everyone, this is Andrew again. Uh, this tutorial, we're going to continue on from our first tutorial. That's the one about voxel explosions. And we're just going to look at a few extra things like version control, renaming projects, and so on. Uh, as well as work on a few extra things for the project. So, open up Unity. Now just say we wanted to rename this project. It's a commonly asked question. I'll show you a simple way to do it. Let's close that again. Open up the folder. So in mine, it's current projects. There we have a project called Voxel Space Explosion. Just say I wanted it to be in similar format to the rest of my projects. Well, let's just edit it here. So this is just editing it editing it in Windows. So I don't want the space, for example. Yeah, it's only a minor change, but just say that's... Now if we go to Unity again, can you see that it's not on the list anymore? No problem, just hit Open here, and Voxel Explosion, and Unity quite comfortably opens it up again, just to make sure it's working. Yep, no worries. Close that again, just to make sure that it's has linked up correctly. Open up Unity, and there it is in our list. So it's a pretty simple matter of changing, renaming a project. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is set up version control. Now version control is almost a must nowadays if you're doing any sort of development. It's a good way to keep track of the, your last version and any changes you've made since. And you can undo any changes and so on. So the tool that I use is called Mercurial and the software is Tortoise HG. So I'll put this link in the, in the uh, description. So you could probably download this and it comes with Tortoise HG. Now to make, I'll just close Unity, to make, um, to make HG link with our, I'll delete that, um, remove from registry. To make HG, Tortoise HG uh, link with our project, all we have to do is open up Tortoise HG, go File, New Repository, Browse, and go to your project folder, which in this case is Voxel Explosion, select folder, and then hit Create. Okay, let's leave that for the time being. So we'll just minimize that. Um, in our Voxel Explosion folder, you'll see that two things have been created. A .hg folder, that stores all our changes. You can pretty safely ignore that. And then, the, and then there's this file called .hg ignore. Now this is kind of important. At the moment, there's nothing in there. HG ignore basically tells Mercurial that we want to ignore this list of files or patterns of files. So I've got a pre-made one that's you can safely use with Unity. This is the one I use. It it basically just tells you uh, tells Mercurial don't store these in our change logs. So DS store, SLN, anything that ends in SLN, user prefs, CS proj, blah, 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 blah. Uh, don't store build files or don't commit build files, library files, temp files. It's unnecessary to, <clears throat> to maintain in our project. So I'm just gonna copy that. Um, so there they all are. If you want to pause that and type them in yourself. 
or maybe I can just provide the hdignore file, that'll probably be easier. So save that there. Just double check that. Yep, I edited that. So next time we go to Tortoise HG, just hit reset, uh, what's this, refresh. Click on there. Now these are all the files that it's identified in the project. So for the first, for the very first commit, just select everything because we don't know what, what's what here. And type in a, type in a message. So this is what you'll see basically up here. So we'll just call that initial, initial commit, oops. Hit the commit button and then it confirms add selected untracked files. Yes, add. And there we go, that's HG all set up. Now the good thing about HG is when we go into our project, so let's open up Unity again and open up our project. Now just say I edit a script. Um, camera control. Open up camera control and I want to try a couple of things so I I decide, oh, I want to add something here. I've had 4.5. What does that do? Oh, yeah, it doesn't make the game look very nice. Uh, change it to 14.5. Oh, yeah, that looks rubbish. Oh, crap. And just, just say I've I forget what I've done. I don't know what I've changed and I can't fix it. Well, you can go into Mercurial, go into Tortoise HG, I should say, hit refresh, and it shows you a change log. So it says that we've changed the camera control file, which we have. Click on this little plus minus symbol. View change as unified diff output. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of code itself, but click on it. It shows you exactly what you've changed. You've changed this line. to this line. Oh, that's what I've done. I've just added 14.5F to this difference. I don't want that. So all you have to do is right click on the file and go revert. So all revert means is, well, as the English word would mean, is to go back to a previous state. So hit revert. Revert with backup? No. Discard changes. Yes, I want to discard its changes. So discard yeah, don't like it. And that's basically version control in a nutshell. It'll even handle Unity files. So just say I make a change to the scene view. I put our player up high and hit play. Oh man, where's the player? Oh, he went over the wall. <laughs> and I don't know how to get that back. Well, you can go into you can go into version control, hit refresh here. Oh, I didn't save it in Unity. I probably should have done that. So, yeah, it's way too high. So I just hit control S to save it. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a change log. It says that I've changed the main.unity. Remember main is the name of the scene. Main is the name of the scene. So in HG, it's told me that I've done something with main.unity. It can't tell me what because main.unity is a binary file. Unity have created it in their own way, but at least we know that we've done something to it. And if we don't want that change, oh, I don't want that, revert, discard changes, go back into Unity. Unity will ask you to re uh, reload the scene. Yep, and there we go. So the player has gone back to where we had it and everything is fine. So yes, version control is good and I recommend you use it in every one of your projects. Okay, back into the game. Uh, when we play this, we have to wait a little while, don't we, before we get to our first wall. So how about we 
move the wall closer, so double click on an object to focus on it. Remember when we're focused on, ob on an object, when we rotate, we'll be rotating around that object. So if I focus on the player, when I rotate, I'll be rotating around the player, or with respect to the player. So let's move our wall closer. So for testing purposes, <clears throat> for testing purposes, I should say, it's probably better to have the wall closer. So we don't have to keep waiting as long, huh? Great. Now, you'll notice when we click on player, can you see that all the position of the player is slowly changing? We don't really want that, do we? The reason is because Unity's uh, gravity engine, graphics engine, is, um, sorry, I should say it's physics, physics engine, is detecting that the player hit something and therefore it will slowly bounce away or roll away or whatever. So it's slowly moving away and <laughs> that's not what we want. So we can get around that by using these constraints in the rigid body. So this is on the player object, there's the rigid body. We do not want the object to be able to rotate because once it hits an object it explodes. So we don't care about this. So turn off well, it's actually turning on freeze rotation. So we do not want it to rotate in X, Y, and Z position. Also, we do not want it to move in the X direction. So the X direction would be this direction. Hang on. Yep, yeah, that's the X direction. We don't want it to move in the X direction. And at the moment, we don't really want it to move in the Y direction either. So we'll constrain it so that it can't move in the X or Y direction. The Unity engine will not try to attempt, will not attempt to move it in the X or Y direction. We just want it to move in the Z direction, at least for the time being. So turn on all those constraints. Let's see what happens. Bang. So everything's paused. The player is paused in effect and he's not moving. Good. Um, a better way to handle, so when we play this, you notice that there's an object player, explodes and that object player disappears. Now this player, player control script, see that it says here, object player missing game object. It's because we've destroyed it in script. So that's probably not the best way to handle that especially if we want to restart the game. So let's go into that player control script. Now instead of, so in your explode method, instead of destroying the object player, let's just deactivate the object player. So in effect, it's the same as doing this. See this little checkbox here? If you check that that's considered deactivated now. So that's all that's all we'll be doing in code, just hitting that button in effect. Which graphically speaking is achieving the same result. There's no need to to uh, destroy that object. So our gameplay won't be affected in any way. Object oops. Object what I <laughs> object player. Now the method is just set active. So set active, oh, we'll see what that does. Set active summary, activates, deactivates the game object. Exactly what we want. It takes a bool, so we want to deactivate. So on upon explosion, the object player will be deactivated. Set active equals false. We'll set active false. Let's try that. Great. So the visual effect is the same, but the object player remains. Good. It means we can now do something with that object player. Now remember our explosion, so it's a prefab. It had a duration of five, right? 
So how about after that explosion is done, we want to restart the game. So knowing that our duration is five, probably we should set that as a constant somewhere. Well, we've got our other constants here. We may as well, so it's an integer, private int, it could be a float. Um, well, we'll say it's a float because it, technically it is a float. Um, quite a yeah, private cons float and we'll call that um, explosion duration. Explosion duration equals 5f and you can leave a note here in seconds. Um, it's probably a good idea to write notes for these for all your constants so that when somebody comes to edit it at some other point they'll know well, what does speed mean you can say speed is what um, so even I forget and I wrote this damn project um, speed is the speed of the player isn't it so player speed in units game units Per second. Tag wall, well that's probably more obvious, <laughs> the, it's a tag so we don't need to leave a note for that. <clears throat> okay so explosion duration in seconds, 5f. Now what do we want to do? After the explosion has finished we want something to run, don't we? So we could use a method I'm trying to think of what that method is. Um, late update, so exploding. So probably here. So in our late update, we set off this explosion. Uh, we could we could do it in our explode method because we're creating we're instantiating an explosion system here. So after explosion. Um, reset the play, uh, reset the game. Yeah, okay, so after the explosion, reset the game. Uh, there's a method called invoke. Now, invoke, if you look at the description, invokes the method method name in time seconds. Hmm, that's probably exactly what we want. So, invoke the method name is which is a string so hmm we'll call the method name reset we'll make that soon reset and the time is the explosion duration so all that does is whenever an explode occurs whenever this method is called it does all that and then invokes the reset method after 5 seconds Oh yes, it is a float here, so it's good that we... It wouldn't have mattered if we called it an int, but you may as well keep the same uh, type that you're, you're going to use. Right, so let's make a method. Private void reset. Just to confirm this is going to be called in five seconds, let's do a debug. Debug log not assert, debug log reset, let's run that, so we're expecting after the explosion finishes this reset occurs, explosion, so we're looking down here seeing what happens, there we go, it reset after the explosion was done Now what happens in a reset? Well, we want our player to go back to their initial position, don't we? Which we don't know. So how could we have logged, how can we keep track of the player's initial position? Well, we could probably, well what is the player's initial position? So player, so in the start method, no, transform dot position, yeah. Upon start, we could log, 
So remember, start's only called once at the very start of the scene. We could log the initial position of the player. So let's make a private vector 3. Private vector. By the way, you don't need to write private here, but I'm just doing it to mainly for coding practice. So we know that it's just part of this class of player control. We can't access it from other other classes. So private vector 3. Um, initial player position. So here, oops, initial, no, initial player position will equal transform dot position at start. Now that will not change. That will not change throughout the life cycle of this class because it'll only run once. But every time we restart the game, sorry, every time we reload this scene, this would be called, which we're not going to do at the moment. We're just staying in the same scene. So the initial player position is set. So in our reset, let's get rid of that. We want to set the current position. So transform dot position will equal initial player position. Now, will that work? My guess is no. Can anybody think why? Let's have a look, see what it does. Boom. Reset. You can see the camera has moved, hasn't it? It's moved back to our initial position, but the player, the object player is still deactivated is still deactivated. So we need to reactivate the player. Easy matter of just doing the opposite of this. So in, in, in when we explode, <clears throat> we set active false. When we reset, we set active true. Boom. There we are. We're not moving though, are we? So we have to initial reinitialize movement. Um, just say so we don't want to wait the full five seconds. Yes, that's the correct explosion duration, but maybe players don't want to sit around waiting for the waiting for their character to be utterly annihilated. Let's say divided by two. We only want to wait for half the time. So, boom! Oh man! So we reset while we're still our previous incarnation is exploding, which is fine. That kind of adds to the cool factor. To reinitialize movement, well, what's preventing movement? So go to our update. That's where our transform occurs, our uh, mo forward movement occurs. The thing that determines whether that moves or not is the alive flag. So upon reset, we wish to be alive again. So all we have to do is go alive equals true. And that should continue the game. Explosion, explosion, <laughs> an endless Groundhog Day-esque uh, game. <laughs> but we achieved what we wanted to achieve. The game is resetting. You'll notice when we run the game and it resets over and over. See, an explosion object is being created here. And then another one. And then another one. So if somebody was playing this game over and over and over, there'd be an endless collection of explosions that aren't being destroyed. 
So we don't really want that because eventually it's going to chew up memory, isn't it? So how about we destroy that upon, hmm, we could destroy it when we reset, but the problem with that is that the explosion will be reset halfway through because remember we're not waiting for the full duration. Let's try it though, so destroy. Now we have to destroy a game object. Um, explosion system. Explosion system is the thing that we're instantiating. So explosion system dot game object. So whenever we reset, so that's after two and a half seconds, it will destroy the previous explosion. Let's see what that looks like. Bang. Reset. Yeah. Maybe you're happy with that, but all the particles have suddenly disappeared. At least the object is not stay hanging about. Probably a better way is to put this in its own method. So what shall we call that method? Reset explosion or something? Private void remove explosion. Okay, so remove explosion, all it does is destroy explosion system game object. When do we call this? Well, it's not reset, it's not when we reset, is it? It prob probably could be called here. So we could just do a second invoke, which just calls remove explosion, and it doesn't remove it until the full duration of the explosion, so until after, the, uh, sorry, after the explosion finishes. Um, okay, let's try that. Bang, there's the first explosion. It's still there. Ah, <laughs> can you see the issue? I can. It's because the time it takes the player to travel to the wall is less than two and a half seconds. So that's just a game development issue. We can fix that up by probably having the wall a little bit further away. Or you could increase the duration that the player has to wait before resetting the game, either way. So I've just moved the wall ahead. So there's the explosion. Yeah, we can still see the previous explosion. It disappears. There's the new one. It disappears and there's another one. So yeah, that, that handles it quite well. And it allows the player to see, to witness their previous explosion just for just for a laugh. Good. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is add some sound. To create your own sound, like using a microphone and so on, I use a program called Audacity. So Audacity is a free open source cross-platform audio software for multi-track recording and ed editing. Great. Download that. I'll, I'll add the link to the description. I'll just open that up. It's a pretty simple tool, but it, it allows you to do lots and lots of, it's got lots and lots of features. You can generate sounds, just say, you can generate a chirp. <laughs> it's using my uh, computer speakers. I'll change that to, Oops, generate chirp. I don't know if that'll be recorded on this video though. Hmm. I'll keep it coming through. <laughs> I'll keep it going through my uh, 
computer speakers. Okay, that's fine. Um, well, we want to make, create an explosion. So you could record your own explosion. So I could record my voice. So let's try that. Or you could do something a bit more professional, like using a generator. So there's a fire and explosion sounds here. You may have to add that or download it. I'm not sure. But I'll click on that. Fire and explosion sound. That sounds okay. So I'll use that. There's our explosion. Now to export it, we uh, to export it so that Unity can use it, we can just go export audio. Um, quick access, current projects, voxel explosion, assets. So all of our game files go into assets, like our sprites and sounds and so on. Create a new folder called audio, not a, audio, and this can just be called explosion. An og, an og vorbis file is fine. You can adjust the quality here if you don't, if you want to save some space, especially for larger files, but we'll keep it at the default five. So explosion, save. Okay. Great. That's all we have to do. Um, when you're exporting, you can reduce the, if you find the volumes too high in game, you can reduce it when you're exporting. So just reduce the gain. So if I play that, or if I want it louder, Right, eh? We'll close you. Uh, close Audacity. No, I don't want to save it. Okay, if you go back to Unity, you'll notice that we have a new folder, Audio, with our explosion sound effect in it. We can double click on that to hear it. I can hear it anyway. Hopefully, you can too. Um, now, back in our Player Control class. When do we want to hear that sound? Well, we want to hear it when we explode, don't we? So explode occurs and then we want to hear a sound. So we could just simply make a, create a method called play sound or play explosion sound. Let's create that private void play explosion sound hmm I might just make that more generic let's call it a play sound there's a shortcut instead of me renaming that and then trying to look through my code and renaming all other instances or other all other calls to it we can just go right click refactor rename so I, I don't want it to be called play explosion sound. I want it to be called play sound. Hit OK. And you'll notice that all references to that now will be changed to play sound. And instead, I'd like to pass an argument. So let's create a, let's create a parameter called audio source. Audio, sorry, it's, a type, it's of type audio source. We'll call it SRC source and to play a sound you just go source play great so that's all play sound does you just pass in a source an audio source and we play it what does play one shot do play one shot plays an audio clip and scales the audio source volume by volume scale Okay, and what does play do? Play, well it doesn't say. Play delayed. So there's a whole bunch of options you can do here. Play one shot, play scheduled. Let's just try play. I don't want to do anything fancy. 
Now, this needs a source, doesn't it? So we should probably create a source, an explosion source. <laughs> explosion source, <laughs> sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? So up here, let's make a private audio source. Explosion source. <laughs> I'll call it, <laughs> I'll put source at the front, so source explosion. So it's a bit easier to remember. If you use this sort of format, then you can know that all my audio sources will start with SRC and then I just give them a description. And you could apply that for many things, like for particle system, I could have write PS at the start or something. Anyway, we'll stick with this conventions. SRC explosion. When we start the game, we need to set up this source this audio source. So in, in the start function set up audio. So src explosion will equal um, do we have a create component? Mm, component get component add component maybe add component that's not what I want to do game object here we go so on our game object so remember our game object refers to this on our game object we want to add a component now add component let me just add component, if you look at the way it's set up here, we have to put the type in those angular brackets. So add component of type audio source. Right, so all that will do is, in effect, that will hit this button, it will do what this button does. It will add a component of type audio source. So you could, in theory, add it manually here if you wanted to, but let's do it in code. It's good practice. So when player when player control starts, we're going to add a new component of type audio source. Let's set up some parameters: source, explosion, clip. Clip is important. That's the actual audio it'll be playing. Equals. Well, we don't have a clip here. We'll, we'll call it clip explosion. We'll set that up soon. Source explosion dot something else looping. Yeah, loop. What does loop take? Loop is a boolean. So we do not want it to loop. We don't want the explosion sound to go over and over again. So we'll say that equals false. Source explosion. Now, another important one is play on awake. I think by default, this is true. Or is it false? Either way. Do we want it to play on awake? So when it gets instantiated, no, we do not. We do not want this to play on awake. Otherwise, when the game starts, we'll hear an explosion. So we'll put that, set that to false. Now this clip, well, we can just set up a public, a public uh, variable here, can't we? Clip is of type what? Clip is a audio clip. So public audio clip clip explosion. So this allows us, well it prompts, it prompts us in Unity to add a clip. Great. Go back to Unity. If we go to our player object, um, oh we got an error here, no overload Meth, no overload for method play sound takes zero arguments. Okay, that just means we've, we're calling play sound here, but there is no method with zero arguments. So play sound. So in this we're under explode where we've got play sound source explosion. That should fix that error. Great, and you can see now, 
under player control see it's got a clip explosion here that was our public variable um, all we have to do is go to our audio and drag this in so clip explosion with our explosion sound so that's fine so let's walk through all this again we've declared a audio clip a public audio clip clip explosion now if you want to see where that's used in your code just go right click find references and I'll tell you all the places it's used so it's that's the first location and here's the second instance so in our start method we're setting up the audio set up audio source explosion equals game object add component audio source this effectively the same thing as hitting this button here add component we're setting its clip which is the clip that we've passed we're making sure it doesn't loop and we're making sure it doesn't play on awake when in our explode method we call a we call this play sound source explosion go to declaration and all play sound does is source.play <laughs> in theory we could have just gone we could not we could potentially not use this method and just go <laughs> source explosion dot play right here if we wanted to either way whatever suits your tastes let's give that a go great okay that seems to be working um, now's probably a good time to save or to back up our work so go to uh, tortoise HG so this is our working directory just to refresh it'll show us all the changes that we've made so we've done something to the main unity scene you'll just have to trust that you've done that right as long as the game is playing correctly that's fine player control we've added a audio clip we've added some comments we've added an explosion duration it's a good idea before committing work just to review it all well it's almost a, a must really um, private audio source yeah we've added a, a vector 3 initial player position great we've set the initial player position we've set up the audio um, instead of destroying the object player we're setting it we're deactivating it we're playing the sound and we're invoking a couple of methods here reset and remove explosion so here's our reset method here's our remove explosion method and here's our play sound method that all looks good um, there's a meta file that's been created that's fine there's our explosion file and that all looks good so I'm happy to commit that um, so in your comments you can just write a reset game add explosion sound however you wish to format that doesn't matter so as long as you know what you as long as you give a an accurate description of what you've done in that change set so let's commit that add selected untracked files yes so when I'm when somebody's coming back to look over what's been done oh here here here's what happened at version one or revision one I should say um, somebody's added this reset game function and they've added the explosion sound hmm, cool if for some reason you've made a mistake and you didn't want to commit that you can just click on here and go um, repository roll back undo so let's do that roll back undo undo most recent commit number one yes so you'll see it's still there all the changes are still there but it hasn't been committed for example I oh I didn't want to I didn't want to use this play sound method after all let's get rid of that 
and instead we just want to go source explosion dot play oops that should achieve the same thing just to double check great back to here just remember to keep refreshing so it, it takes in all the latest changes so in player control if you, we scroll down we'll notice that there is no play sound method anymore instead we're just playing it directly from the source here I like that uh, oh you see that our um, previous message has disappeared you can get that back just by going to this copy message here, we are, here it is reset game add explosion sound woohoo commit and that's done I think that's all we'll do today so we've added sound we've and allowed the player to the game to reset after the explosion occurs cool and we fixed up a couple of bugs thank you